In this problem, we are looking at gas flow through the blades of a gas turbine. And we're interested in the power and the force that is given to a blade by the flow of gas. So we're looking at a turbine, like represented in this picture, with incoming flow, like so, and outgoing flow, like so. All the while, the turbine blade is moving in this direction over here. So there are three velocities, and the point of this exercise is to work with relative velocities and see what happens to our control volume when we change points of view. There are two points of view you could adopt to describe those three velocities. One is the point of view of the photographer, You're standing next to the turbine, like represented in this picture here, and you are taking a photo. In this point of view, the blade is moving relative to you, and you could see it on the bottom left down here. It, the blade would be moving at 400 meters per second, like so. From that point of view, you would see the gas moving at 800 meters per second, like so. And the gas would then leave at 300 meters per second, like so. You could also see it from a different point of view. You could jump on the blade and move at 400 meters per second together with the blade. If you did this, then you would see the velocity here coming in, the gas coming in at 400 meters per second and leaving at 600 meters per second, like so, here. You would obtain those vectors here, 400 meters per second and 600 meters per second, by taking the inlet velocity and outlet velocity here and subtracting to them the blade velocity. Uh, the math to do so is relatively trivial. It's just a little bit tedious to calculate. So we have the components given here in this problem to make things a little bit easier. So what's the force and what's the power given to the blade? Well, to answer the question about the force, we need to move, let me change page. We need to write a momentum balance equation. A momentum balance equation, in this case, looks like this. Um, we have a net force that's applying on the control volume, and it is equal to minus the sum of, every time, the mass flow multiplied by the velocity. This is here for the inlet. And then plus the same thing for the outlet, like so. And here I would have here the mass flow, local mass flow, uh, multiplied by the velocity vector, like so. So which velocities um, and which mass flows do we take? Uh, which point of view do we adopt? Well, there are two control volumes you could take to describe those three velocities. The first control volume is a control volume that surrounds the blades as represented here on the bottom left. And so in this case, you would have, let's say we have a box that surrounds the blades like this. You would have two velocities, incoming and outgoing. You would have the incoming velocities here at 800 meters per second and the outgoing velocity at 300 meters per second. So this would be here V2 and this would be here V1 like this. But you also have to think that you are not moving. The blades are moving relative to you. And so as the blades are passing and through your control volume, they are carrying an unknown amount of mass flow with them. And so you have coming in through your control volume, this velocity coming in, let's call it V3 here, and that velocity here outgoing, let's call it V4 here. Attached to these two velocities is an unknown amount of mass flow. Luckily, the mass flow m dot v4 and the mass flow m dot v3 are the same. This is because of the symmetry situation that we have as we describe the blades, which are just turning around the axis and each having the same mass flow attached to them. So from the point of view of the photographer, when you describe the control volume, you have four velocities, two incoming velocities and two outgoing velocities. The same situation described from the point of view of the blade would look like so. This is the situation that's represented on the right, right there. So it would look like this. You would have here a box, the same box surrounding the blades. Let's see if I can draw this, yes. And then you would have now two vectors. You would have 400 meters per second, like so, and not going at 600 meters per second, like so. This is V1 and this is V2, like this. There is no more incoming and outgoing velocities from the bottom on the top because you are moving together with the blades. So no blade is entering or leaving your control volume. Which of the two control volumes you take is up to you. Both of them will give you the same result. However, my tip 
is to always attach your control volume to the object that is moving because this makes the visualization of flows much easier. You have fewer tricks and uh, traps to fall into with these incoming and outgoing velocities through your control volume. So I'm going to adopt here the control volume shown on the right and solve the problem with that control volume. If you have nothing to do on a rainy Saturday afternoon, uh, then maybe you can try on the left uh, to use this control volume and you will see you will get exactly the same result. So let's work out the math now for for the control volume on the right. We have the mass flow, sorry, the net force is equal to the mass flow multiplied by vector v2 minus vector v1, like so. Each of those vectors has two components. So we could write this as m dot multiplied by v2x minus v1x and then v2y minus v1y. Like so. Which numbers do we put into this? Well, we know that the mass flow is 1.7 kilograms per second. And then we now have to work out the components of velocity. V2x is the x component of that velocity here. And so I have to take the 623 meters per second and squish them down with an angle of 63.4 degrees. And so I take here 623, 623.8, and I put then the cosine of the angle 63.4 degrees, like so. This is V2x. To this, I subtract V1x, and V1x would be the x component of that velocity, 400 squished down with an angle of 37.6. So this is now 453.8 times the cos of 37.6 degrees. On the y component, then we take now this v2y here. This would be a negative number, minus 623. So this is here, minus 623.8 times um, the sine of the same angle, 63.4 degree, minus here in the y direction, positive y direction, 453.8 times the sine of 37.6 degrees, like so. And if you work out the math, this should give you here, and now this would give you um, a final result of minus 136.7, and this would be then in newtons. This is our net force. How to represent now this net force as it applies on this control volume? Well, you have in the x direction, negative a little bit, 100 newtons, and in the y direction, negative one, a large number, 1,000. And so this would be here in this direction, it would be a force that applies like so. This would be F net as a vector, something like this. Now with this net force here, F net, applying to the fluid, we can compute the force that's applying to the blade. And if the fluid has a force that is pushing it this way, this would be here F net, then we have applying on the blade as the opposite force, which would be then here a vector like so. And this would be the force of the fluid on the blade like this. What is the power now that's applying on the blade by the fluid? Um, the power is the work done per second. And the work done per second would be here, force due to the fluid on the blade, like so, dot the velocity of the blade. This is a dot product of two vectors, it's a number, and this would be quantified as power in watts, W. And this looks now like the component of F, that's a long velocity blade. And let's have a look at the velocity blade. Blade is moving with this direction here, like so. This is the velocity of the blade. And so we would take here the y component of this force applied along this velocity. This is then here, F, Fb, 
y as a number, yes, multiplied by the velocity of the blade, vp, like so. And this is the y component of ffb, which is then minus, minus 1018, like so. And so I get here 9 multiplied by the velocity of the blade, which is 442 meters per second here. And this gives me here 6 times 6 times 10 to the power 5 watts, which computes as 627. 0.7 kilowatt. This is the power given to a single blade. How big is this? Well, um, a lot. <laughs> 600 kilowatts. This is probably around something like 500 horsepower. This is the power of a very powerful truck. And this is the power given to the by the flow to a blade that's about this big. That you could hold in your hand. And so blades, turbine blades, are extremely powerful. Some of that power will have to be given back to the compressor. Um, but some of that power is extracted through the shaft and given out to the machine. Turbine engines are generally extremely powerful. So this is how you use the momentum balance equation um, to use to compute force and power when things are moving.